Pascal Corbet, who is the uh, communications officer for the Secretariat, will give us a discussion. About Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, while I'm getting ready here and get the other uh, presentation on. All right, so I hope you appreciate it. We're really trying to push the technology a little bit, you know, so as you can see, so it takes sometimes a little bit. It's all life, though it's not, we are recording, but this is still life. So I think what is important to note is what, what Brian has said already, that essentially communications is a knowledge exchange is actually what the platform is all about. The knowledge is all retained within all the different organizations. And the, the job, especially within the secretariat, is to facilitate to get that knowledge flow going. And I would think that probably very important is to not just stay within those buzzwords, but actually, you know, get it actually going. And if you, if you think of the, the tree that Brian had just introduced, there's the KX tools. This, the, the tools would actually be the fabric that actually makes that link between the members. And, and on that fabric, the, diff, the exchange would take place. And I think what makes the platform unique and where the added value is, is that um, it's not all about these little nitty-gritty data about country A and X and Y and Z, but it's more on that higher level where members can actually exchange on how to do things and ideally also what they would do in the, in the future, not just now, but also in the future to actually coordinate better where they're going with their activity. So let me just go into a couple of tools that we use. This is, looks very familiar to all of you. That's basically what our shared calendar looks like. And you can see there's a whole lot of um, telcos going on. And these telcos are not just basically calling three, four people, they're all set up with agendas and, and there's minutes coming out. So people have, um, from our membership, have integrated themselves into a work group, for example, on, on agricultural research. And there, for example, you have once a month, on average, a, a telco where there's actual commitments, discussions about the budget from the platform side and how to move on um, as a group and produce policy uh, briefs and, and um, studies for certain aspects. So this is basically just to show you um, what we do. These are the minutes that come out then, as you can see. And then we go in towards the website. The website is obviously a, a very um, big retainer of, of the knowledge. We have different sections, news stories at the bottom, and we have upcoming events which are basically fit by the calendar. And the calendar looks very bland, but you might have all seen it. If you really go into it, we, we put calendar entries in there and we can see that this event uh, just on our website has gotten 1,000 hits in that small span that we actually had it up until just before I checked before we came here. And it turns out to be, especially prospectively, quite a good tool to inform members and also wider constituencies out in Kenya, wherever that are not really donor or practitioners integrated in our work, but maybe more on the recipient side to actually see what's going on. And we're not publishing just events there that are already there with, with um, other organizations, but also what we do internally a little bit. So for example, you can see there's also one uh, item there that says ARD related events in Rio there we did a, a compilation of what we found is all ARD related that is uh, going on what kind of events are going on in Rio and believe it or not also has I think almost a thousand hits for people interested in where the where that all feeds together then we have also about every six weeks for our members primarily we have our uh, um, a newsletter an electronic newsletter that informs our membership um, on, on different uh, items that are now, uh, that had just happened. This is looking backwards more. And you can see here, for example, let me introduce that as well, the CADEP DP task team. Um, that's a donors hooked together talking about CADEP. 
the Comprehensive Africa Agricultural Development Program. <laughs> and the next DP stands for the Development Partners. And the TAS team is the group of donors that come together. And if, if I go to the next slide, there's another newsletter just used by that CADEP DPTT to inform the Agriculture Donor Working Group um, um, staff members in Africa primarily on, on certain things that this group feels is, is not really communicated well to them. It's primarily information that is available but is somehow not really facilitated to getting through. So we're also coming in there to actually provide that fabric and in there. And the, the um, subscription list for this, uh, for this newsletter, that can, you can forward it, and obviously people can subscribe to it again. It's also in the hundreds already. Um, I think it also goes up to 1,000 by now. So this also, you can see that it actually, there is quite a lot of pickup. It's also produced in French, by the way. And there, there you can see that actually grows, people are interested. Now, what's been mentioned there before, now pushing the technology side even more, is the virtual briefing. And for this, we do use a, a software that's called WebEx by the company Cisco. And the, the idea is you have a, a conferencing tool, like you know from the video conference, um, that tool is used to, to actually have different people online. They can speak to each other like on a video conference, but they can sit at their, at their desk and communicate with headsets there and also do presentations at the same time. I will go and start this just now, and then you can see how it's actually done. See, now I'm... Uh, oh, the trouble is not switching over to the... So we can't do it now. Wait. Can you move it over to so we can see the was it in here? Is it in the enter? You do. So ah, I just have to move it to the right. There's this other screen is here on the side. It's <laughs> great. Okay. Okay. So there you can see um, this is this is a the virtual briefing going on. So we had a, a particular subject that was introduced by, by uh, Mary Laura from Switzerland. And she has here in the center here, she has her PowerPoint type of presentation and she goes in there. You can see her speaking. The other members are watching at their screen and they just start discussing certain, uh, certain issues. They can give their input. And we are now looking into expanding this also to have a more of an outer audience like we have with the live stream you know, that can actually listen in. Maybe not so much really talking with people at the same time. That's not possible if you have a couple hundred. But you have an inner circle that discusses things, that applies, goes in, listens and discusses uh, w uh, with Mary Lore there, for example. And then um, the, uh, the wider audience can actually use Twitter and so forth to come in. That's the second part that we're looking at now to, to actually expand this. And we actually had requests for, for today here to make that available and also have people dialing in and being even more actively involved. So now you would have to tell me how do I get the screen back over because it's, it's here on the side. <laughs> Just do that. Okay, <laughs> it just comes out the off there, great. Okay, all right. Okay. Now we have a similar thing. I don't, I don't need to show you that now. A similar thing is videos. We use the same technology to do one-on-one -on -one interviews. So we have, for example, here there was Usman. We have some newer videos as well where, where we think there's a, an issue that G8 was just coming up and our member David Haig, which is obviously on the American side, very, very much in, involved with the whole G8 process right now. So we, we sit in front of the 
system. He sits there and we use, we ask questions and do a one-on-one -on -one interview that we record online with the system and place it there. And then obviously you can let on launch your comments and so forth. And it's also a, a tool we've used it about 10 times now with the new technology and it's still very much coming. So it basically it's also a promotion right now to to make you aware that these things are there and also maybe come up with suggestions for what else could be where it could be applied. Now moving a bit quicker here, this is basically it looks very familiar to you. This is an online chair facility where members can under a certain subject. This is the DP task teams workspace can share doc documents with one another. So it's basically like a drop and lift box of information that is not necessarily uh, private but there they can also share drafts when they talk about and there's also connected to that is a is a SharePoint like you know from your organizations where they can simultaneously almost work on certain documents which is which is a challenge to do usually when you do interagency work because you have huge IT departments and usually it's not that easy to actually get them get them together with one within one organization it's difficult enough but here you, this is sort of unique because it's not that easy to to get people involved on on SharePoints with uh, coming the one has Lotus system the one that and the one so this is basically what this is for yeah uh, this is also on the website is basically showing what you see there in the back a whole number of different um, publications that have been developed um, they're all available also as PDFs with with links to as you know, the regular, the the platform knowledge pieces have been mentioned uh, before. They were uh, commissioned out for um, private sector and and a number of other issues. So there are more substantial works, and others are are a bit smaller. Okay, obviously, platform is involved in um, important meetings. The AGA, the Annual General Assembly that Brian had just mentioned once a year, it's actually the flagship um, event where all the members come together and also um, other friends of the platform and and uh, talk about very important issues. Uh, this year, for example, David Nabarro is there, I summarized a lot of the discussion there. And then you have at the bottom here, as you can see, there is the dialogue event, uh, what we have right now. We participate in, in knowledge fairs and uh, in all sorts of other events. And for that, we produce not just the regular banners, posters, flyers, and so forth. We're trying to bring flowcharts uh, together to, to actually get the, the information out in a more structured way and, and not just sort of do um, aesthetic add aesthetic value to to the event by by placing posters there but also to support the flow of information and obviously you have what you've seen before this is where you see actually what we're doing right now um, this was taped before and then we when we have certain events we report on that um, to quite some extent on our website from different events but also we support the sort of policy maker outreach, and for example, with what we come to now, the climate change side with the CCAFs Commission, when it comes to um, reaching out to donors and policy makers, that's, I think, where the platform has a unique um, USP um, to try and take those recommendations and really reach the policy makers. That's then also obviously placed on the website. That's the beginning of the video, or no, that's the middle of the video that we see later on. That's something that the platform could look into also a bit more. That's producing sort of online videos that explain certain issues by using using um, charts and moving picture uh, to, to get the issues uh, more um, aesthetically um, conveyed to different audiences. We'll see that probably at the end of the whole event. This is something that we could look also a bit more in. This was done by the CCAFs Commission. This is just basically showing how these uh, things are then explained in plain English. It's a podcast so people can see it online. It's just a visualization of that. Yeah, and then I think that's all discussed. We can have more 
more training type webinar functions with our system in, in the future and uh, can also we're also thinking about uh, from the secretariat side to have more comprehensive contact databases to make the the contacting of the different members in between each other easier and what it what comes with that is also trying to develop an instant messaging service like you maybe know from Skype there's you can send messages to hook up the members in a group like Yammer is one software that was used before so that they can actually contact straightforward quickly with each other and sort of create more of a group. Let's see.